If you are ready to get started in wholesaling real estate and get your first deal in under two weeks, get your first deal this month in wholesaling real estate and actually get become successful, get successful and become rich in this business and do everything you possibly would want in your life. Wholesaling real estate is the vehicle for that. It is the side hustle, the full-time thing. It is the thing that's going to change everything for you. So what is up guys? My name is Zach Ginn and in today's live stream, I want to really just take the entire live and really just talk about how to get started in wholesaling real estate. How do I start? How do I get my first deal? What is wholesaling real estate? There's so many of these questions I know you guys have out here. Uh, so many beginners that get started in this business, right? And so what I want to do is just have a really a recap uh, today of the entire wholesaling process of how to start. And if you are brand new in this business, I think this is a perfect video for you because so many wholesalers, they pick up bad habits from broke wholesaling gurus and all these crazy people. And the honest truth is if you can know exactly the right steps to take without the bad habit, sometimes you're better off than the people that have been wholesaling for a while, right? And so that's what I want to do today. That's what I want to share with you guys and really help you become the best wholesaler possible. So my name is Zach. And if you don't know who I am, I've done over a thousand real estate wholesaling deals the past six years, and I'm 23 years old. I am planning on hopefully doing a thousand wholesaling deals this year. I'm committed. That's what I'm working on. And we are on pace for that. So I'm excited for it. But uh, that's kind of what I want to talk about today is, you know, kind of a little bit of my journey, but most important importantly, your journey and how you're going to get your first wholesaling real estate deal as soon as possible. So without further ado, let's break it down. Let's get it going and let's share everything. But before we get it going, before I share everything, guys, this is literally a $1,000 webinar or like whatever they do to sell you on it, right? But th this is it. I, I can make a lot of money selling courses and doing all these things, but all I do is just get it out to you for free. So before we get into it, do me a favor, guys, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. The first question you're going to have, and I get it. I get asked this all the time. This is a huge question, but what is wholesaling real estate? What is this thing I scream about? Why do I talk about it all the time? What is wholesaling real estate? In all honestly, in all honesty, wholesaling real estate is a very simple process. I think a lot of wholesalers complicate this process. Uh, they, they try to make everything so crazy and stressful. But uh, the honest truth, guys, is this business is all about having conversations with people and getting problems solved. That, that is basically what I found. Like that, that is this business. Somebody has a problem, you solve it, you get paid for solving that problem. That's what wholesaling real estate is at a basic point, right? And so if I can explain it to you, I got charts and fancy infographics to kind of help you out with it, obviously. But honestly, what I could say is in wholesaling real estate, it is the art of finding somebody who wants to sell the property for a discount, putting that property under contract and selling that contract to a rich landlord or house flipper for a one, two, three thousand dollar profit, right? Now that's still on the low end, like two, three thousand dollars. Now there's deals where you can make five grand, 10 grand, 15, even hundred, right? So I would say the average deal in wholesaling real estate is probably between fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. My average wholesaling deal is between thirty to thirty-five thousand. Used to be forty, uh, but you know, doing more deals, it goes down a little more, right? So I made a lot of money in wholesaling real estate, and you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, he did a thousand deals." It's not a thousand. It's a thousand deals as like thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars a deal being the average, not fifteen. I mean, I think that's the thing a lot of people don't understand. So wholesaling real estate, you get really rich. You get make a lot of money very quick. And the thing is, wait, oh my gosh, this must be illegal. This must be crazy, right? Like, well, how I not know about this? The honest truth is wholesaling real estate is all done through title companies and attorneys. So if it's a title company, there's usually an attorney there signing everything off. Everything's done very legally. Uh, everything's done all above board. And so the cool part about wholesaling real estate is we have something called the constitution clause in the United States, which allows us to form contracts and to sell them. And that's what we do in wholesaling real estate. We sell contracts. Uh, there is multiple mil billion dollar corporations like DR Horton and like Pulte Homes that assign contracts all day. Like, let me give you an example of what, what billion dollar organizations do. They agree to go buy a nice piece of land for let's say $500,000. They don't want that land. They want to have another piece of land. They'll sell it to another builder for $550,000 and they just assign it and they make a profit. Why can't you do the same thing, right? That's what they do. And it's all legal for them to do. And it's legal for you to do. Corporations and people are the same thing pretty much to a point legally. So that's what wholesaling real estate is. We find people that want to sell the property and then we sell that contract that we write for it. We don't sell the piece of real estate. We actually sell the contract. And so let me break down an overview of what a 30 day wholesaling deal entails. Now it's seems complicated. And I know I'm going to throw a lot at you if you're a beginner right now, but this is just what a handy dandy chart of the wholesaling process is. And it's going to sound confusing, but in this video, we're going to break down the entire process. So let's go over the wholesaling process over now. Don't get mad at me. Don't think I'm trying to give you all these crazy stressful things, but let me just share with you a wholesaling process overview. Okay. This is what the wholesaling process looks like. Okay. If you go to freewholesaling.com, we got a lot of great handy charts. I'm a visual learner, so it helps me learn a lot more doing this, uh, but this is it. So this is it. So this is the 
uh, basically the wholesaling process overview from day zero to 30. It takes about 30 days on average some, for somebody to get a wholesaling real estate deal. So this is how you're gonna do it. So really, this is it. So day one through seven is what we call marketing. Marketing is basically the art of finding somebody who wants to sell their piece of real estate. Pretty simple, right? Hey, I wanna go sell my house for a discount, right? We find a stressed property with our marketing. I might text somebody, I might call somebody. Pretty simple, right? Day seven through 14, we're gonna do what we call locking up the property, which is basically just writing up an agreement to buy the property. And we take pictures of the house, we look at it. 14 through 18, we just find the buyer to that piece of real estate. And that is going to be that rich landlord or house flipper that's going to buy the piece of real estate, but they're mostly just buying our contract. Boom, works really well. 18 through 24, we actually walk that buyer through so they can actually see the house. Then we give them what we call an assignment of contract, which is basically the piece of paper stating that we're going to sell the contract for a profit. And it just shows how much we make closing day. Title company gets the check, the money, we get our check, right? Pretty simple. Um, I know it sounds very confusing for everybody starting out, but what I could tell you is this is the process. And if I could explain it even easier, we find somebody that wants to sell the property. We sign an agreement to buy it. We find somebody that wants to go buy that agreement from us. I'm telling you there's actually a ton of cash buyers. I didn't think there was as many cash buyers when I started this business, but real estate is a huge industry. We walk them through the house. They like it. They sign that assignment of contract. We're basically selling the contract and we close and make our money. That's what wholesaling is. If any guru tries to tell you this is a more complicated way or do it, they're just trying to sell you money. I don't want to make any money off of you. I'm not here to sell you anything. This is what the process is. So if you're brand new, this is what it is. I don't care what you're broke wholesaling guru says this is what it is all right don't complicate it, all right that is what the whole entire wholesaling process is don't complicate it all right guys and gals and so the first question we got to ask yourself and we're going to kind of go down the line here so we can really understand how to do this the right way but are you in the right market i think that's going to be the biggest question for a lot of newbies out here and i think it's the first thing we have to talk about right are you in a good wholesaling real estate market or are you in a bad wholesaling market if you're watching this there are good markets and there are bad markets what i can tell you is there's more good markets than bad markets there's probably i say 10 to 15 metros that I would consider not the best. Uh, and that's pushing it hard. But like, you know, I can add San Francisco and San Jose into one. So I, I guess you could call it 10. But uh, if you're in the right market, and really, there's only two questions you have to ask yourself if you're in the right market or the wrong market in wholesaling real estate. I have personally found, in my opinion, there's two factors to figure out if you're in a good market or a bad market for wholesaling. I keep it simple. That's what I do. And it's helped me succeed in this business. So you got to look at the two things. It's population and median home price. If your population in your market is a above 50,000 for the city you live in, that's good. We like that, right? That is factor number one. Now, if factor number one's good, you're in a good market. Now, if you're in a population below 50,000, it's gonna be a little rougher. Hopefully your county has a population of over 100,000 that could make it up. But if it's not one of those two, you live in like, I don't know, Crazyville, Texas with 40 people living in it and there's not a supermarket, but there's not a Walmart like 40 miles away. That's the nearest Walmart. You're probably in trouble, okay? It's not good, right? And so what I would say is you're probably have to do a virtual market and we'll break all that stuff down you know freehosting.com we have that all that stuff there but you got to make sure you are in the right market and if you're in the wrong market got to be a little careful so are you in the right market or not make sure you look at the population so the first question is like zach why do i have to be in the right population that makes zero sense guys population is just like business all right in the business of wholesaling real estate we are selling contract that's what we do we sell contract that's what this business is so don't overcomplicate it don't make this all crazy but that's what we do we sell contract Thank thing like selling ice cream. Think about this. If you think of Houston, Texas, Houston, Texas gets hot. Okay. It gets unbearable in the summer. All right. Same thing in Florida. Unbearable. Okay. It's insane. Plus you got that humidity from the ocean there too. It's, it's insane. If I was to sell ice cream out of a truck in downtown Houston in the middle of summer, I know there's a lot of customers. All right. It's hot. There's a big demand for ice cream and there's a lot of people in Houston, right? Now, if I'm in Alaska in December, there's going to be some, but like not a lot. All right. There's no big demand. Now, if I had hot cocoa in Alaska in December in a decent population, I could probably sell it. Now, if I'm in, you know, the Yukon and there's like four people living there, I mean, I might be able to sell four. Like you got to be careful, right? And so population is a big one. If you're not having a big customer base, it's going to be a little rough. Like if I want to open a Walmart or like a grocery store, if there's 500 people living in the grocery store, it's going to be a little harder, you know, to make money off there. You want at least two, four, 5,000 customers, right? You only 500. It's going to be rough uh, to have a good grocery store, right? And so you need higher population areas. And that's going to be very key for your success in wholesaling. And so in wholesaling, we need enough sellers to 
constantly get deals. And so you need a good population. I personally found when the city is over 50,000 people, that's enough deals where you can do it every single month consistently. I want everybody watching this to get to at least 100K a month. And if you have at least 50,000 people in your market, you can easily make at least 100K a year. And so you make 50K a month there. That's the goal for everybody, uh, but even a million. But like, let's just make everyone at six figures starting out. If you wanna make $100,000 a year, you have to have at least 50,000 people in the city. That's just my opinion. But what I can tell you from teaching hundreds of thousands of people wholesaling, that's what truth. That's what the truth is. So if you're in the right market, make sure the population's there. Now, the next part here is the median home price. Are you in a good median home price? Now you have a big population, but if the average house is selling for a million dollars, it's going to be hard because in wholesaling real estate, what we do is we lock up contracts for a discount. And unfortunately we are human beings. Nobody's perfect. And human beings are very flawed when it comes to psychology. We have a lot of psychological issues. I think everybody here does, right? But the truth is here, when you are looking at the psychological thoughts of people when it comes to negotiations, people are less likely to take a discount the higher the price of something. And that might seem confusing starting out, but let me explain this. So if you are selling, let's say a $10 t-shirt and somebody asks you for a 20% discount on that t-shirt, two bucks, fine, uh, two bucks, fine. Sell it for there. like you're at a garage sale, right? That happens all the time. If I ask for a 20% discount on your $2 million house, you're gonna get like a F you, right? They're gonna say, screw that. No way, okay? $400,000 you want off of this? No, 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 no. But they're both 20%. Why is one an automatic no and one's just a pretty much a good yes? Because when the numbers go up, the percentages stay the same, but the price has changed. And so when I have personally found when the piece of real estate is over $400,000, it's really hard to get discount. And here's the problem. When you buy real estate, so if I buy a piece of real estate, closing costs, reselling it if I'm flipping it, th those costs, percentages stay the same, but the costs go up. And so I'm gonna need big discounts. Like I'm gonna need, if I'm doing million dollar houses, I need hundreds of thousands of dollars of discounts where most people aren't willing to do. If I buy a hundred thousand dollar house, I don't need that much. And so I have found over time with a lot of low balling sellers, because that's what I like doing, because I make a lot of money doing it. When the property is below $400,000, like on its best day after repairing it, I can really get, I have a good chance of getting that deal. When it's above that, it's not a good deal. So you want to make sure the median home price, so the average price of real estate of a house in that market is below 400,000. Now we're not going after houses with 400, probably going after houses with 250 because there's million dollar houses there. And that's kind of the average. That's what we want to do. And so you might be like, Dak, how do I figure that number out? That, that's crazy. All you got to do is go to Google. So go to google.com and search median home price space city, Houston, Texas, and Zillow will pop up with the median home prices. Now 250 or something like that, right? How to find population, same thing, Houston, Texas population, right? And what you have to understand about the right market is they have to both be the same thing. They, they both have to be the same. So you have to have a population that's good and a median home price that's good together. So what's something that's not a good market? Los Angeles. Los Angeles has the population, but the median home price is too high. Same thing with San Francisco, New York City, Miami, pretty much, Chicago. Like, that's the issue. Now, what if we flip grip where median home price is like 80K, but population's a thousand. That's not a good deal. What's a good deal? Detroit, Michigan, right? Look at Detroit. The average home is like $75,000 in Detroit and then the population's in the million. Boom, right? You got to understand though, to a point, I think everybody like understands this if you live in like Detroit or Memphis, that like there's million dollar houses in Memphis, Tennessee. Beautiful, right? You got Graceland, you got beautiful history, great houses, a lot of great working class neighborhoods that are cheap, but there's like very low crime, great areas. In wholesaling real estate, the areas that we want to avoid usually are high crime areas because unfortunately we're selling these to flippers. And as somebody that flips houses that used to flip houses in high crime areas, it, the houses get broken into all the time. There's a lot of issues. You don't deal with squatters. It's, just, it's a lot harder. A lot of those are section eight properties. It's just, they're a lot more pain in the butt to wholesale. And you make less on high crime areas. And really, if you look at a city, there's probably four or five like hot spots of high crime areas. And honestly, the rest of them. So like you just avoid about 5% of a city and then the other 95% you can wholesale, right? And that's honestly what you can find. And you, so what you really want to do the best markets and areas for wholesaling. So this goes back to the next question is like, how do I find the best areas of wholesaling? Just generally in any city I go to, I want to find the lowest priced houses coinciding with the lowest crime rate. The low, when prices are low and crime rates are low, those are where the working class people are. And those are the best start. They're called starter homes sometimes too. They're older houses. They're a little smaller, but these are great pieces of real estate because they're not as renovated. So a lot of house slippers are customers who are buying our contracts like them. They actually make the most money when you rent them out, you get the best return on your money. Those are the best houses to be going after. And how do you figure that out? Honestly, you can do some reverse engineering. Think of where the working class people in the city are, you know, the people that are janitors, people that are mechanics, uh, school teachers, people that are like, they're not making like 1%, like they're not 1%ers, but they work their 
butts off and they have a nice house in a nice low crime area and they have families, right? Like you, it's a great place to raise a family too, right? And so those are the best areas I have found. There's usually hot spots where there's a lot of rental properties in that area too. A lot of working class people can't afford a mortgage at the time. It's just the truth. And so that's the best ways to find it. Now I'm just, I'm being candid with you. This is how I find the best areas. You can go any way around it, but honestly, that, that's going to be the best way to find it. All right. I think a lot of people get really confused with that, but that's how you do it. So how also do you find the best area zip codes for wholesaling, right? I personally found there's two really good ways to find wholesaling areas. Uh, in my opinion, number one, you just ask cash buyers, like just, hey, Mr. Cash Buyer, where are their good wholesalers, right? So where are their best wholesaling deals? Or where are the wholesalers at? And they'll tell you, hey, I want to buy in this area. Boom. And then see where wholesalers are doing deals. You can find wholesalers bragging about what addresses they're wholesaling. And then from there, we'll sell those areas, right? And so now we know what areas to go after, what makes a good market, what makes a bad market. Let's go to the next part, actually finding these people that want to sell their piece of real estate, right? And so finding the people that want to sell their house for a discount, that's the next question. Like, wait a second, how do I find these people? Because it's confusing why somebody wants to sell their house for a discount. Well, let's get into it. So finding somebody that wants to sell their house at a deep discount comes from actually marketing, like I've said before, where we go and we just reach out to these people. So how do I reach out to somebody? It comes down, marketing comes down to really two things, lists and channels. That is it. So let's talk about the first thing, lists. So we got to think of finding somebody that wants to sell their real estate for a big discount. Now in wholesaling real estate, we have slang, you know, real estate, a lot of real estate people have their own like slang that they do. And this one slang word, which you probably hear a lot, and it's a person that wants to sell their house for a deep discount, usually for cash. They're great sellers for wholesaling real estate. These are people, what we call motivated sellers. Motivated sellers are people that want to sell their property for a discount. They are motivated to sell a house, pretty much it. And so since they're motivated sellers, we want to go find them and reach out to them. So how do I find a motivated seller, right? This might be shocking to you, but if you go to a list of, say we do Memphis, of a random 50,000 people that are homeowners, I would probably tell you less than mm, probably a 10th of a percent want to sell it for cash or a discount or they're a motivated seller. That's terrible, Zach. So you're telling me if I have like a thousand leads, like one of them is going to be a motivated seller. This is unbearable. I, I can't make any money doing this. Now, yes, it, it makes crazy. But if I get a list with a motivating factor, the chance of them wanting to be a motivated seller, 10 X's, not doubles, not triples, not quadruples, 10 X's, the chance, like a thousand, I, I think it was a thousand percent more likely to be a motivated seller if they have a motivating factor. What's a motivating factor? Motivating factor is going to be, for example, if somebody passes away and they inherit a property that is in a, you know, not renovated, they're a lot more likely to just want to get rid of the property. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to own the house. And so how do I find these type of really motivated type of lists? We have to pull a list that has a type of motivation on it. So if somebody passes away, that list is what we call a probate list. And so there are four distinct lists that I've honestly found categories that find really good motivated seller deals. What are they? Number one, what we call government lists. This is a list you get from your local government that has a money motivating factor. Now, these are lists like the code violations, the water shutoff list, the fire damage property list, the credit card debt lien list, the IRS debt lien list, the arrest record list. I get the tax delinquencies lien. I can go on and on forever. And you might be like, Zach, whoa, you break all these lists down. I would, I personally, I would love to break down all these lists right now for you. But what I can tell you is I do not have 10 hours to break this all down today. But what I could tell you is I do have a free course. It's called freeholsting.com. I'm not going to sell you anything. All right. There's no upsells. You can't put your credit card in anywhere on the website. 0% chance of that. What I do at freeholsting.com is kind of like this live stream I do. I break down the entire wholesaling process from A to Z. It is a huge course. It is over 100,000 people in it. Active, dude, not 100,000 signups, 100,000 active active people every single month in that website. And what they do is they learn wholesaling. So like I said, let's say code violation list. I have an entire two hour breakdown on code violation. What's a code violation? Why should I pull it? And how do I pull it? And me actually going live and actually pulling that list. You also get links to talk to me one-on-one -on -one for free, all these things. I want you to know, you probably have PTSD from YouTube ads and all these crazy things. I was asking to sell me, is it's going to want my money? Not let, let me give my word. All right. I'm not going to charge you for freehostling.com. I don't want your money. I don't want any of it. Okay. I just want to teach you wholesaling for free. It helped me make, become a millionaire. I want you to be become a millionaire. That is it. That's my gift to the community. That's it. Freehosting.com. I will not sell you anything in that course. I just want to help you out. But so all these lists I mentioned, they are in that course on how you break it down. So I do recommend everybody watching this go to freehosting.com. I'm probably going to say the word freehosting.com a lot, but what I can tell you is you can't learn wholesaling in two hours. You can't. I, I can do a two hour live right now. You ain't going to learn in two hours. It comes from slowly digest every single day. And in freehosting.com, we do have a 30 day wholesaling challenge where for 30 days, I have about a 30 minute hour long lesson, like a class for 30 for so one 
day one, you watch the lesson for 30 minutes, day two, lesson number two. And then each one just shows you a different part of wholesaling where it's in chronological order. By day 30, you'll know the entire process in and out. That's what it is, right? And so go to freelancing.com, you'll learn it. I'm going to mention freelancing.com in this video a lot because some of these videos like government lists to pull code violation lists, it's about 45 minutes for me to explain it to you. But once you know it, you don't really have to do it. So I did share code violation. So I'll tell you a code violation is basically a list you get from the government where there's this thing called code enforcement and they'll go around town driving around looking for ugly house. And if they find an ugly house with either tall grass, structural damage, mold, mildew on the property, they're going to charge that person until they fix that problem because it is against the code for the city. It is an eyesore to the community. Old people like to call code enforcement to um, rat out, I guess, uh, them so they could fix the community and they have ugly houses. And so your local code enforcement prop, your local code enforcement department probably has a, eh, on average, 300 code violations actively. They just added to the list right now. People have ugly houses. There's a really big chance. So that's one of those, there's a like big 10, 20, $30,000 wholesaling deal. So it's definitely good and advantageous that you go and find it. But go to freehosting.com to, to learn how to actually go out here and pull that list. Now, the second one is what we call paid list. Now, what is a paid list? A paid list is a list that I pay with the software and they'll find properties uh, that have big motivations that you just can't get from the government. One example of this is like the vacant property list, property list of people that there's nobody living in the house. You can pay for a software and they'll figure that out for you where there's nobody living in the house. Whoa, that's, that's crazy, right? And so nobody lives in the house, but there is an owner that lives outside the house. And if the property just sitting there abandoned, they probably didn't want to get rid of the property. There's a big motivation for that. And so that's why I love paid lists. There's zombie property lists. There's there's a lot of really good ones out here. Um, a lot of good motivations, hired landlords. I love this list. I love paid lists like crazy. How do you pull paid lists? I can tell everybody right now, if you want to pull a paid list, just go to listrei.com. That is one of my favorite websites, L-I-S-T-R-E-I.com. It's called PropStream. You can try a free trial on how to do it. And there's also one of my other favorite websites it's called zackday.com, zackdata.com. They're both competitors. And honestly, I love them both. I can't tell you one's better than the other. I think they're both very, very good. Some has strengths and weaknesses and some has other strengths and weaknesses. I love them both. So zackdata.com and listrei.com are the two websites I do recommend for getting paid lists. Uh, but yeah, they're great places to do it. And you can do a lot of really cool, cool stuff with that, but I'll write that down in another video. Uh, but yeah, you can pay for a list on here. I can tell everybody watching this though, if you're starting out in this business and you got no money, don't pay for anything. Okay. Like I'm the free guy. All right. I do recommend paying for marketing because that obviously helps you get a wholesaling deal, but you don't have to, right? Like I started this business 300 bucks. So no. all right. Number three here, what we call Zillow for sale by owners. That's another good way to find people that want to sell the property for a discount. Uh, these are what we call Zillow for sale by owners. So they're listing their house for sale and they're an owner of a piece of real estate. Sounds pretty easy, right? And as a Zillow for sale by owner, uh, they want to sell the property without a realtor. So there's a good chance it's a wholesaling deal. I love cold calling the Zillow for sale by owners live. It's a great one. Uh, I do share at freehosting.com how to pull them, talk to them. I love it, right? It's free. It doesn't cost anything. Now, number four, this is kind of a paid one. This is kind of a free one. This is actually one of my personal favorites. And if you go to freehosting.com and you get the links and you learn how to talk to me for free, when I hop with you on the one-on-one -on -one talks and we have our conversations and you're in a good wholesaling market, nine times out of 10, I'm going to tell you to drive for dollars and reverse drive for dollars. And a lot of people watching this video right now are like, oh my gosh, here he goes again, about driving for dollars and reverse drawing for dollars. I'm sorry. I love it. It works so well. So many wholesalers are getting their first deal from it. I cannot recommend it enough because on average, the average, so let's talk about wholesaling, right? Like you are, you're watching me. So you're not learning what the, like the gurus do. Cause the gurus just, they want your money. They want you to spend five grand to learn it. They five grand for a course. They want you to spend four grand on marketing. They want to drop 10 G's just get in this, get started in this business. When honestly, if you want to drive for dollars right now and you learn from me for free, you can get, you get that $10,000 worth of things to get your deal, probably for a hundred bucks, maybe 200 bucks. And you'll actually work less, do more deals and make more money by doing this strategy. But gurus don't ever share about how to do this. You know why? They can't make money off of you. And that's the honest truth. I, I can't justify selling a $5,000 course on how to get in your car and look for ugly house. I can't. And that is what drawing for dollars is. You go in your car, get behind the wheel and you look for ugly house. That it's really simple. You know why? Because every guru and their mama tells you to go pull a paid list and text it and spend all this money doing it. And here's the problem. When four or 5,000 wholesalers in your city, try to do that. Eh, maybe in your state, do that. They're all like, they're like sheep with a herd. Okay. Yes. I will pull this list and I'll skip trace it. And then you got 30 people in your own market doing that same exact list. What are you going to do when you, you do that list? You're going to be the 29th guy or gal 
calling that person or texting that same exact list. Boring, terrible, right? Guys, here's the problem. The truth is out in wholesaling real estate. Wholesaling is amazing. Wholesaling costs no money. It's completely legal. And you could run up $100,000 in your first year without any money. You can be 16 years old, 17, 18. It doesn't care how old you are, what gender you are, how tall you are, how you sound, what accent. It doesn't matter. If you have a hustle, you can make over six figures this year in your first year wholesaling. And then eventually up to seven figures. No degree, no education. We don't care. If you want to help people out, you'll get paid in this business. This is why wholesaling real estate works so dang well. Here's the big problem, guys and gals. Uh, when it comes to that, a lot of people have learned that the secret's out about wholesaling. Six years ago, the secret was still there. It, it's not there anymore, okay? And so he, here's the problem. Everyone's doing the same thing. And when everybody's doing the same thing on their marketing, it's like a you know a pond. If everyone's fishing in the same fishing pond, like a lot of competition, it's going to be harder to catch a fish when everyone's fishing the same thing. They're using the same lure, same thing. This would drive for dollars goes into place. This is why drawing for dollars works. Drawing for dollars is old marketing tactic, but it's the best one right now for wholesaling real estate. You know why? Because you can't buy the list. That's right. The gurus don't talk about this method really at all. You know why? Because they can't make money off of you, so they don't talk about it, which means no one really in your market is doing this like crazy. Unless you're in like a huge like market, and that's obviously a little different. But like just get in your car and look for ugly houses. Chances are that ugly house is not on any of the lists. And you can do very well. Now, on top of that, you know what we call reverse drawing for dollars. Now, I am having a decent amount of followers lately. And so there are some people drawing for dollars in the market. It used to be a big secret. Now there are some. So let's go the extra leg up. You know what we call reverse drawing for dollars is basically when you find an ugly house, usually you're drawing for dollars, you use like dmzac.com, which is basically a, a software that you can helps you do it really quick and easy. Just click it, boom, it's on there. They skip trace the list. They find the person's phone number. That's what skip tracing is. And they call them up, right? On top of that, if you're going to do reverse drawing for dollars, it actually increases your success even more. You just get a sticky note. You can write something really simple like, hey, this is Zach. I had a quick question about your property property, please give me a call back, slap that on the door and you'll get a huge response rate on it over 40, 50%. They, they call you. So the leads actually come to you. You have a conversation, boom, you reach, you reach out and find the motivated sellers. That's it. Like, oh my gosh, what they, what, what they call me? What do I say? Hey, are you looking to sell your property? Me and my partner are actually looking for people who are looking to sell the property in the area. This is a good area for us to buy. No, I'm not looking to sell. No big deal. Oh, yeah. maybe I'm looking to sell. Then you have the conversation there, right? Drawing for dollars, reverse drawing for dollars. Highly recommend it. Telling you the gurus do not want you to know about it because they can't make money off of you. And so this really breaks down to the marketing channel. And so this is when we actually start the marketing process, right? And so I think a lot of wholesalers get this one confused too. And I legit don't know why, but I can tell you is we pull the list and we pull the marketing channel. I love fishing. You might see some fishing books here, but like I love fishing. All right. And I always look at fishing and marketing the same way because in fishing, you have two things. You have a rod and you have a reel, right? That's it. You also have a hook on the other line too. So you have the rod and reel, and then you basically have the hook or the bait, right? So I got my fishing rod and reel and then i got my bait that's how i catch fish right and so what i like to do is i have my rod and reel and i maybe put a bad bait or a good bait on it right and that's how it works and so i like fishing in the crazy big wild ocean you know thousand pound fish crazy stuff right huge marlin sailfish love that stuff right and so what i can tell you is if you have a really really bad rod and really good bait you're gonna catch the fish like it's gonna hook it but that rod might snap in half and then boom you don't catch the fish that right on the other hand if you have a really good rod a really nice one but you have like nothing really on the bait no one's gonna go bite it, right? The key here is to have a really good rod and really good bait. And so you can catch the fish. It's attracted to it, to the, the bait and the rod's not going to snap in half. It's awesome, right? Here's the big issue, guys and gals. The whole thing's the same way. The list is the bait and the marketing channel is the reel. You can't be really good at one and bad at the other. You have to have both of them very decent. I'd rather you be okay at both than have one good and one bad. And so the list is the bait that attracts and then the channel's going after it with the chant, with, with the rod and reel. And so we're the best ways. So what's a marketing channel? Marketing channel is basically the vehicle that we use, not literally, but it's the method we use to go let people know in a list that I'm looking to buy properties for cash and if they're asking if they're looking to sell it. So what do I do? Pretty simple. I stick to the basic. <clears throat> there are really three marketing channels I think you guys should really stick to. And honestly, if you want to complicate this, you can. There's there's a million ways to do it. But honestly, if you're starting out, you want to get started, there's three ways. All right. It is what we call number one, cold calling. So I basically, on my phone, if you guys watch my live stream I did yesterday, I actually went out here and I cold called for an hour and a half. Pretty fun. So I basically, I have a list, call them up. Hey, you're looking to sell your property? Pretty simple. Now I have other scripts. I like to say, hey, are you the owner of the property? Are you interested in selling it? We call them up. On top of that, number two, that's as complicated as it should be. Now at frills.com, we have scripts, what to say. So maybe like, wait, wait, Zach, whoa, whoa, whoa. But what do I say if they do want to sell their house? What do I do? Oh my gosh, we got, trust me, frills.com, we got it. Now I'll actually share my script on how to talk to sellers too, because I think that's something that a lot of people have anxiety on. But I will 
share this in this video too. Just uh, wait a couple minutes. Number two, SMS text boss. I love SMS text boss. That's when you go out here and you text sellers on a list if they're looking to sell their house. Pretty simple. Then number three, you just have your reverse drawing for dollars of sticky notes because they call you back. Pretty simple, right? There's other methods, right? So it's like, wait, Zach, you got your first deal putting those we, we buy ugly houses signs. So that I got my first whole my actually I made my first hundred thousand dollars in wholesaling at 17 years old by putting we buy ugly houses signs. They're called what we call bandit signs. You stick them in the ground, it says we buy ugly houses, and it has a sign on it, right? That worked really well six years ago. It's not working too well versus six years ago. So I don't recommend it for people. I honestly would have made more money cold calling and reverse running for dollars, but that's for a different story. If you want to hear my whole wholesaling story, I, I didn't want to waste, you know, 45 minutes talk. I have a full hour where I break down my whole story really quick. 17 years old in high school. My dad did really good in wholesaling. He didn't want to, uh, he didn't really want to do much with me with it. Right. So I basically was on my own there. Uh, he kind of told me, Hey, this is what you should do. Here's some books. And I just got my first deal. Second deal made a hundred K partnered up with him after I think I made over a quarter million, at least 300,000. And then we partnered up together. I helped him scale it up. We own the wholesaling business together. And uh, we have the largest wholesaling business pretty much in the, uh, I don't, mm, I would say on the treasure coast by far in all of South Florida, that might be pushing it. I, I know some guys that are pushing over 10 million uh, in assignment fees there. And we're not that in the South Florida market only. So I can't say that. Um, but overall, I do a lot of virtual wholesaling, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, the whole story is there. Pretty cool. Right. So the thing you have to understand is like, all right, Zach, I can pull a list. I can do this. And the next question is, how do I find people's phone numbers? Right. That makes no sense to me. Finding somebody's phone number is what we call skip tracing. And skip tracing is finding somebody's whereabouts. It is, it's a detective term. And really, how do you find somebody's phone number? You can use a website for free or you can use a website and pay for it. Right. Obviously, when you pay for the information, you get a lot better, but you can get it for free. So if anybody wants to go out here and actually find somebody's phone number absolutely for free and they don't want to pay for it. So let's say you find an ugly house in your area right now. You just want to call them, call them up. A good website that I love. It's called truepeoplesearch.com. Again, let me explain this. Truepeoplesearch.com. That is actually an amazing website. We can find pretty much anyone's phone number. About 60% accurate. Now you can pay for a service like zachdata.com. Actually, zachdata.com is the best skip tracing. Listeraria.com, I'd say is the second best one. And then third best is uh, dmzach.com. But uh, I can tell you, skip tracing is amazing, right? And so use the paid ones if you have the money for it. If not, use truepeoplesearch.com. The paid one's a lot e easier. The free one is a lot more work, but yeah. And so, yeah. All right. Uh, next one here is acquisitions. So yes. Yeah, so acquisitions is basically the process of actually going out here and finding a contract to lock it up. That is what it is. All right. We go out here and our sole focus, our sole finding, like we are looking at one goal for acquisitions that is getting a deal locked up in contract signed. So it's pretty simple. And I don't want to complicate this marketing. The only point of marketing is finding somebody who wants to sell the property for cash. Acquisitions is getting that property under contract. The lowest price. So I told everyone, I'll tell you if you have some anxiety talking to sellers, what to say, this is it. So if somebody says, Hey, I'm looking to sell my property for cash. Okay, great. And you're like, wait, what do I say? This is what you say. Step one, there's three steps to closing a deal. Number one, someone wants to sell the property. We think of MCTP. MCTP stands for motivation, condition, time frame, and price. That's what we ask. Hey, Mr. Seller, motivation. Why are you looking to sell the property? C, condition. Hey, Mr. Seller, can you tell me a little bit about the property? T, time frame. Hey, Mr. Seller, when are you looking to sell the house? And then P, price. What price are you looking to sell the property for? That is it. And then from there, you get off the phone, say something like, hey, Mr. Seller, I got to look, I got to look at this property with my partner. Is it okay if I can call you back tomorrow and we can see what I can do, maybe see that property or not? Sure. No big deal, right? You get off the phone. You don't close them on the first call. You don't do any of this. I like to go see the properties in person. If I do virtual wholesaling, I can actually go out here and close it over the phone, whatever way you want to do it, right? Number two, you get off the phone, right? And so what we're going to do is find our LEO and our MAO. So MAO is short for max allowable offer. There's formulas. There's, it's, it's not that complicated. Basically what MAO is, you just want to figure out what a cash buyer is going to buy it for. And how do you figure that out? You figure out what the property will be worth all brand spanking new. So if it's a, if it's a three bedroom, two bath, it's a thousand square feet. We're going to look in that area for the last six months of recently sold properties like that, which is, it's like, all right, if you have a Ford F-150 and so I have a Ford F-150 and it was built, it was a 2021 and it's got 30,000 miles on it, let's say, and I want to go sell it now. What is it worth? I'm just going to look at what other ones are selling for right now. 2021 Ford F-150s with 30,000 ish miles and see the last, you know, 15 sold in the state of Florida. And then I can figure it out pretty quick, right? Same thing for houses. And I show you at frilson.com actually how to do that. It's really not that complicated. And then LAO, we're going to figure out what our least allowable offer is, which is basically what's the lowest we can give of a low ball starting out. Pretty simple, right? Step two, we call them back and we say, hey, when's a good time for us to meet up? You'll meet the person with this. You go meet the person at the property. You basically condition the seller. So conditioning the seller, I don't want to complicate it too much, but you say, hey, Mr. Seller, before I actually go see the property, are you ready to make a yes or no decision on selling? I don't waste your time or my time and only go buy the property once. Basically what that big spiel was is you just ask them, hey, are you ready to make 
make a decision on selling the property right now today. Because when you go give them a lowball offer and they say yes or no, pretty simple, but maybe they say maybe. And if they say maybe, that's not good either. Because maybe if they give me the maybe, then there's no deal. Because like, uh, I might want to sell it, I might not. And then you're in limbo and time kills all deals. You do not want to do that. And so you need to get a yes or no. That will actually give you more chances of getting the deal, I promise you. And what we do is what we do, the go for no strategy. And the go for no strategy is when negotiating, we are going to give an offer that we know the seller is going to say no on. Hands up, like, hands down, like hands down, it's the best strategy. Just give an offer that we know is going to say no. Don't be too offensive, but make sure they're going to say no on it. So we can squeeze the most money out of the deal possible. This is how you make 30, 40, $50,000 on a wholesaling deal. You want to squeeze the most money out of the deal. Then from there, we can use like a good cop, bad cop. Hey, Mr. Seller, I was talking to my partner, Rick, and he told me he's looking to buy this house for a hundred thousand. Oh my gosh, that's way too low. Hey, I know Rick's crazy. What works for you? And then you negotiate from there. You lock up the contract. And then from there, that's all the point of acquisitions. We do what we call disposition and disposition is basically a fancy term for us selling a deal. We're disposing of the deal, the contract or profit, right? We're selling the whole real estate deal. And so dispositions, we're looking for people to buy our contract for a profit. These are people who we call cash buyers. They want to buy the house for cash. They're going to buy our contract, give us our nice assignment fee. So dispositions is amazing. Uh, it's not as complicated as people seem. So how do I find people that want to buy my contract for cash? Now, I'll tell you this in wholesaling real estate. I didn't think there were a lot of cash buyers. I was like, I could see, pe I could see people that have ugly houses. I get that. But how am I going to find somebody who's going to want to buy a contract? This seems confused. It's a lot of people buying. There's a lot of cash buyers out there because real estate is a trillion dollar industry. It's huge. And real estate makes money. Okay. I buy a piece of real estate. I can rent it out and it can produce passive income. It's amazing. It is one of the largest investment vehicles in the entire world. And in the United States, it is actually the largest investment vehicle. If you consider uh, where most people invest their money because in their mortgages, so they're technically investing in real estate. Now that's for individual owners, stock market, you can say corporations, but they all invest in real estate too. The so real estate comes with everything, right? The majority of millionaires own real estate and that's how people do it, right? Real estate's the best. And so for dispositions, you got to understand we're looking for people who want to buy our contract. People who want to buy your contract in wholesaling real estate, usually 99.5% of the time, they're either going to buy it for two reasons. Number one, you buy the house, maybe renovate it, but they're looking to buy the house and just rent it out. They want to make cash flow. They want to rent it out. They want to be a landlord. That's where half of them are. The other half of them want to buy it, renovate it, and then flip it for a nice profit. Make $40,000, $50,000 on a flip, right? They're the house flippers. That's pretty much the in-between. I'm both of them. I'm a cash buyer too, because I make a lot of money wholesaling and I invest that money into real estate and stuff that makes me money, right? Hey, me, right? And so I'll either buy properties and rent them out or I'll buy properties and flip them. I like to do both of them, right? And so they're sometimes they're interchangeable. Sometimes they're not. It just depends. And so let's talk about the landlord cash buyers, the landlord people for dispositions first. This is what we're going to call the landlord buyers. If people are looking to buy it, rent it out. These, how you find them is basically just cold call the four rents. If I'm renting a property out, if I cold call people that are listing the property for rent, most likely a landlord or a realtor for the landlord, which we can go and reverse engineer the owner and then call them up, skip trace them. Use like listeria.com, zachdata.com. You can find it really easy. I love that stuff, right? So cold call the four rents, Zillow, you can do realtor.com. There's a lot of places, Craigslist, Facebook, just cold call the four rents. Guess what? Freewholesaling.com, baby. You can go out here and actually find that list. So it works out pretty well. Number two, you can cold call the cash sale. So cash sales, how we find the flippers. If somebody buys a house for cash, all right, and then they go put the property in the market and then they sell it for a big profit in about a five, six month period, there's a 90% chance they're a house flipper. And software like listrei.com actually find us house flippers and you can pull that list really easy. I love it. Cold call the cash sales. Good one. Number three, you can cold call title companies. So title companies actually deal with wholesaling transactions. Okay. It's actually crazy, but got lunch there. all right, but you can actually do cold call. You can actually cold call the title company. Now a title company, they will do the wholesaling transaction for us, the mailman for that. And we'll break that down uh, next couple of minutes there. But title companies, you just ask them, Hey, we're some good cash buyers that are buying private share cash in the area. And of course the title company wants you to make money with you closing with them. So they'll give you it. I love title companies. They always provide great cash buyers. And then number four, you can just go to the local property auction. I love the local property auctions. I'll tell you this. You go to a local property auction, there are going to be people bidding on property to buy cash. And so if they're bidding on one piece of real estate and there's 50 people there, only one person lost one. And that means 49 people lost on the bidding. They're hung. They, they got money and they're looking to auction off and buy properties for cash. They're sad. They didn't win the bid. That's 49 people that are sad that have money ready to go to buy more real estate.
estate. Go to the local property auction. They're there. And then the last part here in wholesaling real estate is what we call the title company. And that was the last one. And really the title company, I can tell you that is going to be the middleman. That is going to be the third party transaction person. And really how title companies work is they are going to be the ones really paying them. And so they are the trusted uh, third party company mm, intermediary, if you really want to call it that, that is going to handle the entire wholesaling process for it and the real estate selling process of the seller. And so it gives you a lot of legitimacy too. And so how title companies work with wholesaling is, let's say for example, how do we get, let's teach you how to get paid in wholesaling, right? So if I lock up a property, let's say for example, for $100,000, I bring that contract to the title company. They start the title work. They want to make sure that you know, it's a legitimate owner. They can give title insurance. And really how title insurance works from a you know fourth grader view, if I'm teaching this to a fourth grader. Basically, when you buy a piece of real estate, you want to make sure it's the actual owner and it's not a fraudulent person. And so title insurance, if they sell to you fraudulently and you pay them 200 grand, you have insurance if the title was wrong that you will get your 200 grand back. Because if it's a fraudulent owner, then the real owner can take the property back and you lose out 200 grand. That's like most people, that's all the money they have. You can go lose everything if you do that. So that's why title insurance is, is very important. But really what you do is they bring, they have the contract. So you give them the contract, they start the title work. You assign that contract to the cash buyer. You bring that assignment of contract over to the title company. And that assignment of contract will show something simple like, hey, I'm selling the deal for $120,000. The contract, so Zach gets $20,000 profit because 120 minus 100 is $20,000. And then at closing, how that works is the cash buyer at closing day will give $120,000 to the title company. Title company will give $100,000, which you agreed with the seller to give them 100K. And then you get a nice $20,000 check. And when you get that check, you're going to be like everybody at freelancing.com. All right. So let me show you what the people at freelancing.com look like. All right. And at closing day, this is what you look like. Okay. Now, did I tell you freelancing.com is the largest wholesaling real estate course in the country? I don't think I lied about that. Right. And so this is freelancing.com. So really all you do is put your email password and it'll create your account for you there. Right. But look, look at all these people. Look at Phil. Look at Phil right here. Got a little first chill. I had some rentals done a whole um I own but Phil's time, a happy camper right um, here. About five weeks ago. Who's in, uh, was, where is it? All right, right here. Look, Phil's a happy camper right there. Look um, at that check. In five weeks, made a little twenty thousand dollar um assignment fee. This should have been a forty thousand stack list right there, but uh found it on foreclosures. But anyway, Rick in Zach in, you guys are the freaking man. Full they did good. Benji made fifty K. Does they have his check right there? I had uh, one question, but I just want to start off by saying thank you guys so much. I just finally closed that deal i've been working on for five six months the finally probate. yeah <laughs> dude the probate foreclosure uh that took forever um no, but i just can't thank check. you guys enough because my whole mindset and perspective here's the check right look at that eight thousand dollars fifty wow. grand gosh that's a lot of money that, Woo! Uh, dude. That's a fifty thousand dollars check right there. Look at it. Like, all right, you know what? I can go on and on forever, but look at these. All right, these are all people learn freehostling.com. I didn't pay. They didn't pay me a dime. Absolutely for free. I can go on and on and on forever on this, right? Like, I, I got a million of them. I keep. I'll, I, I'll just keep uploading the checks y'all send to me. But like, I'm telling you, it works. Thousands and thousands of dollars. Freehostling.com. So if I did not convince you to sign up for freehostling.com, I don't know what else will. All right, I about probably a hundred more checks I should upload on that website, but I don't want to go it up forever. But guys, if you go to freehostling.com, that is where I teach you wholesaling real estate. All right, I got the whole breakdown. I got the 30 day wholesaling challenge, everything like that. Go to freelancing.com. This is the time for it. So that's the whole entire wholesaling real estate breakdown. What I can tell you is the people that come successful, people make millions and hundreds of thousands. Go to freelancing.com. They learn it. They ask questions on the one-on-ones and they become better wholesalers. Now, the one thing I want to leave everybody watching this to understand is <sighs> wholesaling real estate seems like a crazy thing, right? You make a lot of money in a short period of time. And a lot of people get really entitled. They feel like they deserve to get a deal. Guys, you don't deserve anything in life. Nothing in life is guaranteed. Life Life itself isn't guaranteed. But the one thing that is guaranteed is you showing up every day and doing what you need to do to get the results that you want. You don't get what you deserve. You don't get what you want. You get what you deserve. And if you think you deserve to make $100,000 this year, go out here and do the work that matches it. The one mantra I could tell everybody, okay? There's one mantra I could tell you if you want to make money in this business. And this, even for a beginner, I want them to understand this. This is life. This is wholesaling real estate. The one equation I can tell you is what we call action equals result. If you want to get result, you want to get, let's say, Look at Benji, they're fifty thousand dollars. If you want to make a fifty thousand dollar check, there's no money that's going to stop you. Freelson.com teaches you all that. The only thing to get that result is you're going to have to take action to get that result. So stop looking at the result. Start looking at the action it's going to take to get that result. How do you get that result? Go to freelson.com. Start going after it. That is it.